That's yeah. by the way, that's everything I get called up for. I'm old lady, sick old lady, old lady in the nursing home, old lady, dead old lady, drunk I, old lady. Know, <laughs> I'm just drunk old lady. You're like me. I, I and I, I'll, I'll claim, I'll, I will uh, tell anybody and who says that they've played more cabbies than me in New York. I'll tell them no, they haven't, because nobody played more cabbies than me in New no, York. No, I know. I, played, I've said, <laughs> I can't tell you how many I've played. Welcome to Comedy Centric, your place for all things comedy. Every week we'll discuss the legends and the people who built the business, the performers, writers, behind the scenes, and stories that you have never heard. So relax, take a load off, and join us for this episode of Comedy Centric. Now the host of your show, nationally headlining comedian, a woman with a wicked sense of humor and a killer Jersey accent, Julia Scotty. Hey there, hi there, ho there, you're as welcome as can be. I'm Julia Scotty, and this, damn it, I did it again. That is me. Kathy What's your name? Oh, Kathy Caldwell. Caldwell. And my bum finger. Who's week she's, three? She's dragging this finger out. No, it's, mm. I think I did bad things to this finger. With it. I mean, not more likely. I know, it's still really in bad shape. I might have well, maybe to go, you should to, go a to a doctor, you know? I did go to a doctor. Again, if it still hurts. Well, well, a little compassion would be nice, Julia. I'm compassionate. I'm just sick of hearing about the damn finger. Oh. (laughs) Don't even make me come. I will come over there and I will beat you with my finger. You can't do anything. You got a bump finger. No, this is. You're going to poke my eye out. You're going to right in the noggin. So what are you doing these days? I mean, what am I doing these days? I know. What do you got going on? What are you doing these days? You took your kitty to the vet. Yes, I she Katie, right? Katie, Katie had. She's fine. She, I, I, as I, as I suspected, it wasn't anything major, but she had had like it sounded like bubbles in her nose, you know, and she's like she had wet bubbles in her nose. And now I've had wet bubbles in my nose, and I know that sound. Um, I don't have them now. I went to the vet. And so she. But, <laughs> and what did they give you? They gave me a shot in the hiney, yeah, really? which is what they did to her. Oh, yeah. yeah. Isn't it I amazing how up. cats don't even feel the shot? They just it is pick amazing. up the skin and they're like, Bleep. yeah. I know. What was fun though, not it's never fun getting her in the box. I snuck up on her. She was she in the morning. <laughs> well, she's <laughs> deaf. You have to preface she is it deaf. With that. Yeah, I gotta preface so that, but you can definitely I, sneak up on her. She likes to sit next to me when I'm having coffee on the other chair. I pull the chair close to me. And she sits there and she sleeps basically, and then so I get I get the box and I put it I put it turn it upright so I could just drop her in, and she gets up she hears me she comes walking over, uh, to my chair and I just I went hello pretty girl and I grabbed it oh you betrayed her, her in, trust and she was yes I did but it was for the greater good she's uh she's all right she got a shot she had a little respiratory thing in her nose hence and they the gave you noise. a shot too so. That's good. Uh, anyway, she's fine. She's sleeping it off, but she'll probably be out later. She's uh, sleeping it off. You sound like she's, she's out drinking off. tequila. She's sleeping it off. Yeah, she's okay. She's thank you for asking. No. Yeah, of course. You had it. You had a rough week. I uh, had for you. You, you, you. you know, you're losing folks in your life. There. I, I'm at the, I think you, you, we go through cycles in life where a whole bunch of people that are, were in our life just drop off, just go away. Go yeah. home. They wherever they go after they yeah. hear they go, and yeah, another one, uh, Silver Friedman. Um, and we were just Silver talking Friedman. about Bud. Yes, Bud Friedman, the, the founder of the the Improv, and right. Silver Saunders Friedman, the co-founder of the Improv. Silver, she died uh, Saturday. Uh, and uh, I'm reading. I was reading a lot of the posts, and it brought back so many memories yeah. of those days. Yeah, she she was an interest. She was a real character, a real show business character you know she had uh she was a former uh dancer i think or a show a chorus girl or corrine as they call them back i think and uh, corrines if you were in the chorus and you were female they were called corrines i believe i'm pretty sure that and um she was uh she was she knew what she wanted she was a she was tough um and sometimes she would piss you off. I know she pissed me off a million times, but I have nothing but fondness in my heart for my time at the improv. I, it was 
my first real taste of show business. And uh, the people I met there and worked with, some of whom are still friends to this day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody that worked there felt the same, I think. Those those people, you know, you look back and you go, they were tough, but but they made you better. You know, I mean, as long as it's not a, a harassment type of situation, sometimes those really tough people that you're like, why can't I get through this person? Just make you better. They just, you know. Many the night I would, when I was first starting out there, you know, you didn't get on for the first few months. You just hung out. That's what you had to do. And, and I this was is a, in downtown New York, right? Yeah, Manhattan, 44th yep. Street, mm -hmm. 9th Avenue, right on the right, west side. Yeah. And she, you know, I had a day job because I was still married and I lived in Jersey. I had a kid and I had a support. Um, and it was, it was hard. I couldn't go in every night, you know, and I, yeah. I went in as many nights a week as I could and uh, stayed as late as I could and got up the next morning dragging my ass, you know. Yeah. But that's because I loved comedy. Sure. And, um, I, you know, the, the club wasn't instrumental in my career because I went out on the road and made my bones out there. But it was instrumental in helping me see the development of myself as a human being and as a comic and as other comics and see what they were doing and how they grew. And I learned, uh, I can remember one night, Eddie Murphy always <laughs> had an issue with her. I don't think he ever... I don't think he ever passed auditions, but he hung out once in a while. And in the back of the room, the showroom, um, there was a gallery, like a tiered row of seats where all the comics would go to sit and watch whoever came in. And I'm back there with Eddie one night, and he's just bitching and moaning about Silver <laughs> and not getting on. Nah, 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 nah. I'm, I'm Eddie Murphy. He, he was totally unknown at this point. And I'm like, Eddie, you got to you got to play the game and you got to. Not, I'm not getting. I'm not working around for this motherfucker club. <laughs> so he went across town to the comic strip, and uh, Richie Tank, and we got. You know, we know the rest of the story. Um, yeah, he, he had a horrible it was, career. That was a yeah. It was a tough club to work to <laughs> yeah. get in to be. Yeah. You know. Um, but yes, it was the first place I ever auditioned. Yeah. Um, I think I've told this story uh, where I sat out in front of the club on a hot. Sunday morning. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And sat there all day and waited for Bud to show up and give me a number. And I, Joe Piscopo, yeah, was the MC the night of my audition. Right. So, so it has a lot of memories for me. And without her and Bud, um, there was no comedy business. You know, mm. it would never have happened. They literally created it. And, and everything you see today, including the iconic brick wall, is the, the, the improv. Because that's what was in the improv. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just brick wall. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And and uh, wow. you know, you owe we owe that to them. So thank you. Both Round of applause. Yeah, but yeah. and sober. And 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 Zoe and Zoe, her daughter and Beth and her daughter. You know, they uh, Zoe. I saw Zoe grow up in that club. You know. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Was, well, those are. I mean, they're good memories, and mm. it's very hard to lose those icons because you know well they're also reminders that uh you know <laughs> we're all getting I mean, old like disney world you move one up on the line to get on space mountain eventually i'm going to get on and not come back oh i'm next <laughs> wait that's bad <laughs> or, or the deli you know, you know right. uh, number zero <laughs> oh that's me you know. <laughs> crown zero there yeah right. I'll, have, I'll have a half a pound of eternity please and just <laughs> anyway um that's that's well, that so that was a hell of an opening for a show. Well, you know, it, it's in, it's actually very interesting that we're talking about this tonight because our guest, uh, and I know you're going to hate this, but my, the, our guest tonight was, oh, no. very, was with on the, the Jade Fountain Inn. Are he, we going he to? was on, the, we auditioned on the same night at the Jade Fountain and we passed auditions at the same night and we worked together at the club for a while. So it's only fitting that, you know, he, he be here tonight. Uh, you're going to, those of you watching, and, and you may even, look, you're going to recognize him instantly um, because he's been on everything. Uh, he's a great, he's one of the great character actors now. He's built a wonderful career for himself. Ted Kaluka, Teddy Kaluka uh, is here, and uh, we're going to be talking to him. 
when we come back from break. And if Jimmy would cue the music, there we go. Oh, he's getting good at it, right? We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Everybody, it's me, Julia. Hey, why am I talking to you now? Now of all times? Uh, because I just uh they, my my new special on Dry Bar, uh Dry Bar Comedy channel is just been released. It's called Julia Scotty Jersey Fresh, because that's what I am. I slap myself, that's how fresh I am. So uh you have to subscribe though to get the dry bar. Um, and if you do, you get access to like I don't know, thousands of other comics, but see my special first, Jersey Fresh. And if you enter my name, Julia Scotty, uh, it's my understanding that you will get a free month of dry bar. So um, go. I, I don't know. I worry about what I do. <laughs> I guess we're back. Be careful what you wish for. Are we? <laughs> I guess we're back. Are we you back? Want music, bitch. Here's your music. Boom. <laughs> right in the face. Right. All right. I hope yes, you sir. enjoyed that little break. Well, okay. Let's get this show on the road. Um, okay. So in 1980, I'm sorry, Kath. I got to go through this again. In 1980, I auditioned for my first comedy job. At the 40, 42, 42 years ago. Shut up. At the Jade Fountain Restaurant of Paramus. Oh, and on that, same, on that same audition was a young man uh not me it was another young man yeah. um who <laughs> both of us it was our very first time on stage doing comedy and uh, he he decided comedy wasn't for him and he, but he wanted to be an actor and so he said to me when that I'm, I'm, I'm giving up comedy i'm going to study acting and i said you're crazy well uh 40 years later he's had an amazing career and if you recognize him lately um, it's he, he. It's probably because you've seen him on the blacklist, where he was uh, Teddy Brimley. He's also on um, the Only Murders in the Building. He's the doorman. I, I forgot the doorman's name. What was it? It's got to be Lester. Teddy. No, it's Lester actually. Anyway, uh, without further ado, here's my old. And I haven't talked to him in 42 years. This is the first time I'm talking to him since then. Teddy Kaluka. There he is. Hey. Holy Welcome. cow! Did you get you? You Welcome. got old. Yeah. You know, we we have spoke. We oh, oh yeah, I did get old. I know we have once twice. I know the last time I saw you, you were doing stand up at Lou Duva's in Totowa, New Jersey, which was like a restaurant. Yeah, it was I remember a that arena. place. It was an yeah. ice hockey arena. And it was Duva it was, was really a famous high? boxing huh? whatever. Yes, yeah, so that's the last time I saw you. Wow. And, That's um, gotta be what early mid to mid eighties, though mid to eighties. Luke Dubas. I want. I'm trying to remember who booked that. What was that? Two nineties, nineties. I don't even think it was that. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I was headlined by that point. Uh, geez. Well, it's all right. So still, it's still thirty yeah. years. Wow. How you been? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I've watched your career. Um, develop and I think you know uh, I love that you know you're 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 what you are you're 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 a great comic you're working all over the country I mean come on it's it's well, you know it's funny where we are 40 years later and um who, who knew it really is I, but I had no doubt I had a little bit of doubt when you said you were going to study acting and leaving comedy but then knowing you the way I did, I said, this guy's, he's, he's such a go-getter and he, and he makes stuff happen. I, I have, I, I think he's actually going to make it. And you have this really incredibly memorable character face, you know, and even back then you were, and all of a sudden I started to see you popping up in commercials and uh, on TV shows. I was looking at your IMDb page today and 
And it was like 36 pages. Yeah. I don't... So we were talking about Lou Dufus. Where it's the last time I saw you, which was, uh, uh, it was a sports bar. You're right. I, I can't. Yeah, the last time I saw you, we and we may have spoken on the phone at some point, but it's many years ago. Yeah, for sure. Many years ago. I'm so proud of you. I got to tell you, I, I, you know, I, I'd be sitting home watching TV and I'm going, holy crap, there he is. Oh, holy crap, there he is again. And all of a sudden, you're everywhere. I was, I'm watching, binge watching NYPD Blue. That's just too lot. Huh? Well, say I missed that all of a sudden. I was binge what? watching NYPD Blue. Again, we're losing. It's not working. Oh, oh crap. Oh, that's a long time ago, NYPD Blue. Yeah. But there you are. But uh, we, well, we got nah. this delay, man. This this, this isn't sucks. working. Anymore. There he is. Well, hello. Oh, oh go, but on there he is. I can hear yeah. him. Much better. So, go on, uh, go on talking about me. I love. Go ahead, please. Well, please. now we're never going to be. I'm going to have to back up again, and then. Uh, yeah. So we the, the last time we saw it was at Lou Duva's. Right. For the third time. I think that's the only time you ever met my wife, Angela. I did it, but yes, uh, yes. that's right. I did. You, you were. I think you were just recently. Married, right? We or say that again. You were just recently married. No, no, we're married. We we got married in. Uh, I got to get this right. 1980, 1988 or nine? I forget. Eight, nineteen eighty nine, and uh, yeah, we're married thirty something years. Wow, that's great. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I I started to say I'm so proud of you. No, oh, uh, thank you. Because I, you know, I, 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 I've watched your career on television, basically, and I was just saying I, I'm binge watching NYPD Blue. Oh, and and son of a bitch, if you don't show up in that one too, yeah. Julie is a couple decades behind in her binge watching. <laughs> that, so well, just, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. The, he's he's watching the Waltons too. I heard is that right? Yeah. I love she the can't Waltons. Wait to see what happens with John Boy? <laughs> I, oh yeah, yeah, I love the Waltons. I can't no, but, help but. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just, you're right. I, I mean, I've been very lucky. And I'll tell you, I'm the first one to say that. I've been very lucky. Although yeah, I paid my dues, I, yes, I think. You, you know, I look at myself as a foot soldier and not, not somebody that went to Yale. You know what I mean? It's. But you know what? I, in, every, in every one of those roles, with the few exceptions, uh, there's, an, there's a comedic element in there. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Yes, you're not doing stand-up anymore, but there's comedy in those characters. Absolutely. After you after you left comedy, did you, did you ever go back to stand up after that? No, no, never, never, ever did I. I, I didn't like it. Um, no. I, the line I use is that I realized I wasn't angry enough to be a comedian. <laughs> so um, I, I, no, I, I didn't like it. And and I'll tell you what happened to me. And I know Julia. Uh, I don't know if she, if she was there or not, but it was, it was one night when. We were getting on in the city. I mean, I, I, I was getting on at the comic strip. I don't know. If, and I know you were much more out there than I was. And I, and I went up and I did a joke about uh, a roach motel. And, and Hiram Caston came at, up to me, who was a comic, and said, Hey, man, I do a roach motel joke, man. And he went up and did his set and his roach motel joke bombed. And uh, I do and remember that. Was, that. That was the night I just said, you know, I just, this isn't for me. And um, I, and then I just, whatever, I, I, somebody said to me, my friend, I forget who it was. It might've been my friend, JJ Clark said, hey, why don't you try doing commercials? And, you know, but back then in those days, we would get backstage every Wednesday and we would, we would go through backstage and mm -hmm. see who was casting what. Backstage was a newspaper that came out once a week. There were two of them. What was the other one? What was backstage? Uh, I, only, I, know the one, I know the one you're talking about. It had a blue banner. Backstage had a red one. And, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't what remember was, either. But, yeah. you know, you'd get, the, you'd get that on a, on a Wednesday. And, and uh, I, I, back then, I still had a job. I was working for the Bergen Record. I remember. And I remember. I used to play, pay the, I, I never paid him. But the guy who used to deliver the papers over to the Port Authority in New York, I used to give them money and he used to bring me back a backstage every Wednesday because if you got the mail, if you got, you got it by mail, which I did, it came Saturday or yeah. you know, by, by then everything is, you know, everybody's cast to whoever, but that was, 
I learned a lot reading backstage. Every see, week. that's you had you had street smarts. That see, that's the that's how savvy you were with your yeah. career. You you ran your career the same way. You, you know, meeting people, you were a good schmoozer, uh, much better than I was. I I, I, look, I used to look at you and go, that son of a bitch, he's good at this. You know, I, do you remember the, the speaking of the the Hiram and all those? Do you remember the the, the night I almost got into fists with uh, Eddie Murphy at at the Chinese restaurant? I, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. We all, I had written a scared straight bit, uh, which was a it was the hot show back then, and I right. was going on ahead of him. I didn't know he had a scared straight bit. And he came off the stage, and he was like, you know, he wanted to duke it out. He accused me of stealing from him. I said, I don't need to steal. I said, if I'm going to steal, I'm, I'm never going to steal from you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah, what I mean, it, and and I I think we were, you know, we didn't. We weren't savvy, I don't think, to the um, just the game over in the other uh, uh, in the city. I mean, it was we out here. We were having fun in Jersey. You know, we were getting up, we were doing our stuff. Yeah, and we they would bring in those New York, New York comics. You know, and but, um, Jackie but, Martling was on uh, not long ago, and he was talking. We were talking about those days, and uh, and and what he would he would bring everybody in from the island, so he never had to deal with those those New York issues. But right. you're right. There was a game going on. Um, oh yeah, it, you know, and, and you had to be part of the, you know, in that clique or so. And mm -hmm. um, I, I just think, you know, I never was in it long enough to to really uh, get that. Um, you know, I, I, I remember saying, I remember seeing um, Robert Wall years ago at um, the Improv. Mm -hmm. And I was very impressed with his stand up. And I used to go there and just watch them. I would go there and watch him. I even used to sneak a, a, a tape recorder in just to just to listen to how they work, you know. And one day I went to Robert Wall and I said, listen, man, I, I heard you live in Jersey. Man, I live in Jersey. Don't you think we can get together maybe and write something and this and that? And he said to me, listen, man, I got my own career to worry about. And and that was it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so he was very and I and right there I learned. You know, it's it, it's just. But on, on the flip side of that coin, it wasn't everybody wasn't like I remember Rick Overton. Do you remember Rick? Sure. And and he was still with Overton and Sullivan. He had just Overton broken and up. Sullivan. Yeah. He had just. And what did they up. do? They were a comedy team. They okay. were uh, mm -hmm. uh, very improv improvisational uh, stuff. And Rick yeah. is just he's still. You'd know him in a heartbeat if yeah. I get yeah. those yeah. pictures. He's a real sharp guy. He's funny. Yeah. Uh, but he lived in Jersey, and I used to yeah, drive. Him, yeah, he used to. I used to drive him home because I lived in Englewood too at the time, and we would talk comedy. And he he was really helpful and really really nice to me because he knew, uh, you know, he knew I was a newbie and I knew I knew I knew nothing about comedy. So, but he knew I wanted it, and that's the difference between you and and me. Uh, I used you were, I used to, if you remember, I used to drive them back to get the bus by the george washington bridge i used to right. i i used to drop the, they used to take the bus and then we used to drive them to a spot where they used and i and i remember driving paul paul riser uh the girl what was the woman's name who who hung out with them um carol leifer carol leifer oh i remember gosh. driving them back and then i did i did um mad about you i i, I was gonna ask you which episode and what did you do on there I um it was a, it's it's a very interesting episode. It's the Viagra episode. Evidently, that uh, he had taken Viagra, and all of a sudden he had this enormous whatever hang, hanging out of his pants, and he was like in a restaurant, and he was like poking people with it. so, and and that's what I was. I was a restaurant guest, but what I was getting at is when we were done, we were chatting, and I reminded him about the the uh, the Jade Fountain and this and that. And he said to me, uh, he, I, I think he said, we used, to, we used to get $15 a night. Or he said, we, I said, I think we used to get $15 a night. And he said, you got 15 I only got <laughs> whatever the numbers were, you know. But the funny thing I thought when I left and said goodbye to him, I wished him luck. So I thought that was sort of comical. After that I is kind of cool. Uh, but I, I got, actually got on a lot of shows through – um, if you hear that phone, I'm sorry. It's uh, no, I didn't hear it. No, my, oh, good. Um, I get on a lot of shows just by mentioning the improv, and I did Kirby Enthusiasm. Um, 
where uh, when I went into audition, I auditioned for, I forget who the producer was at the time, because Larry wasn't even there. And I said to the producer, you know, when I was younger, I used to go watch Larry. And I did. I used to go watch like a Tuesday night. I'd go watch Larry and Gilbert and all those guys would just, and then Rodney would come on and this mm -hmm. and that. But I said, to, I remember the curb and I said to uh, Larry David, I said, oh yeah, man. I said, I used to go to the improv and watch you. And I can't tell you how many times I saw you walk off stage. And he went, oh, because <laughs> I did. I he would he would say, stage. Kathy would say, you people don't deserve me or something you along know, those lines. That's the line. That's the exact line. <laughs> and he would throw the mic on the floor and just walk out. And walk I, 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 and he sort of, he sort of he, you know, because that was, I always try to say goodbye and thank you when I work with someone like that or anybody, uh -huh. you know. And um, when I said that to him, he went, oh, you know, it was like, uh, <laughs> like, uh, like, thanks for reminding me. Because I saw him do it more than once, and I'm sure you did too. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, absolutely. Was he a good stand-up? He was, uh, he's very dry, obviously. Yeah. yeah. It um, didn't matter whether he was good or not. <laughs> he was him. He was yeah. original. He was an original. But it could uh, be, it could be too where my line comes from too. I'm not angry enough. Because, you know, all those guys went up with an edge. They all had yeah. an edge. And I don't think I had an edge. It's almost like songwriters. As soon as you become happy or a, a level person, you don't write great music anymore because you don't have either the anger or the sadness or that thing sparking. Yeah. Like when you're happy, it seems like you're just happy. <laughs> you know, I've never been happy, so I, I don't know what that even feels like. So it's, <laughs> you know, that's it. I'm very happy. I mean, I'm, yeah. I have a big birthday coming this week, and so what? Which one? <laughs> yeah. You want to yeah, say? Yeah. I mean, but so what? I mean, and it, it, it's it's interesting because it just I can see the difference in we're talking about the business. You know, where you know you, you were a lot more. Uh, right for different things and you had a lot more opportunities now that you're older or i'm older i just see and and i'm on believe you know i'm on i'm on a pretty pretty successful comedy the blacklist we're going into season 10 i've been mm -hmm. here since season one i mean i don't do every wow. show yeah. but i do three or four or five a year that people know who brimley is because i'm crazy on the show and i'm <laughs> i torture people and that's how i get James Spade is what the information he wants and people the bit is you know the people who watch the show know Brimley because he torture and he walks around with an oxygen tank and, and the thing up his nose and and you know it's like and whose idea was that was that built into the character or would, would yeah you when I auditioned when I auditioned they gave me this scene to read and this and that and then um the, the producer again it was just one of the producers there and the casting director and after I read the scene, they sort of chuckled a little because the com the character is comic relief. You never know when yeah. he's going to show up. But the producer said to me, uh, "How do you feel about torturing people?" And I said, "I got kids." <laughs> <laughs> he said, and they said, "Good," you know. And they hired me, and I, it's been a great. You know, it's not easy because um, in television you don't get rehearsal; you get one take. Mm -hmm. And with my character, he's dragging, and there's always something. There's always an animal. I'm, I'm I saw the llama, llama yeah. <laughs> or I have a I, one episode. I literally had a boa constrictor around me, you know, with like oh a 13 gosh. foot snake, real snake, and I had to do this serious scene with James Spader about how I got to quit because uh, I can't go to prison anymore, and this and that. And here's the snake. The snake will kill the person for you. I, you know, I never, I killed one person in, in ten seasons. And that was by mistake. <laughs> yeah, that was by mistake. Well, nobody's perfect. <laughs> I, I was working. It was I was torturing somebody with a, with an air compressor, and I just went a little too far, I guess. You know, I didn't know he had. I didn't know he had that problem. You know. <laughs> so, but that. But. Uh, it, but you it, know it, what's it, nice about? Oh, go ahead, Kathy. No, no, Sorry. go ahead, Joel. Oh, go ahead. Please. Uh, what's nice about a career of a character actor, in my opinion, anyway, is that you can, you can be on on the blacklist but at the same time you're on marvelous mrs mazel you're also on uh they on the, the only what it's the only murders in the in the building i mean you're you can be in a number of different places um no yeah yeah i'm very lucky i mean um it you know i 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Very, I, I, and I'm not that I want to plug whatever, but I got to do a movie last year with Anthony Hopkins. I, I saw that. Two weeks with Anthony Hopkins. I, I, I also noticed you called him Tony. No, yeah, I call and we and we email. I email him. He really back within ten minutes. Like he's sitting there waiting. Oh my god! Um, still oh, great. Still. He, and he, what's that? Still, he I, still, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, oh, that's we so email, cool. Like, Happy Thanksgiving. I email mails me back. Blah blah blah. He gave me a, a maize tie when he left as a gift. This beautiful tie that Julie, you know me. I would. I'm not going to buy a tie. No, you like need that. to frame it. Yeah. Well, you frame it. That's what I said. You have him sign it or something because yeah. you know me. I'll get gravy on it. Right. Like, <laughs> as soon as I sit down, I will. So. Yeah, so that's a good. It's a good movie. It's called Armageddon Time. I it's saw it. Just it. It's in the. It's out now, right? Yeah, I don't think it's in the theaters anymore. But it, it's a really nice story about um, the guy who wrote it, James Gray. He, um, it's his story as a kid growing up in Queens in the eighties. Um, you know, there's a little. The whole racial thing is involved, and um, uh, it's a good story. And I play Uncle. Uncle Lewis, who was just a member of the family. I played Tony's brother-in-law in it. Were you, and, um, you, you had the cap? Was that a cap? Or were no, you, they shaved that, my head. That was you. They shaved your head. Wow. Shaved my head. Yeah, they asked. Yeah, they, uh, I didn't care because I did three movies with this director. I had done two already, and this is the third. And basically just called me and said, you want to do it? You want to play my Uncle Lewis? And if you see the movie, I, mean, I pop up now and then. You know, there's the dinner scenes. There's like two or three dinner scenes, and and then there's a, a a scene where we're coming out of the movie theater, me and Anne, Anne Hathaway. And my point being, I mean, I, I'm just I'm lucky. <laughs> I'm You're not lucky. lucky. Listen, there is a little bit of luck involved in this business, but you know that. But you also worked your ass off, and you're also talented, right? You know. And so, yes, while luck may have put you in the right position, you had to deliver the goods, though, too. Yeah, as, yeah, as I do, as we all do. Yeah, and that's it too. I mean, if you don't deliver, that costs the money. That costs the money when you don't yeah. deliver, you know. And mm -hmm. I always say, people say, "What's the secret?" I said, "The secret is the secret is be on time and say thank you when you leave." That's absolutely, you know, absolutely, you're that. absolutely right. Um, yeah. I'm just now, you know, I've got like a budding film and, and TV career uh, where I'm getting. Close I know you're in time. Bros. I, I know what you're in. I'm in Bros for uh, three and a half seconds. That's it. I'm in and out. That's me. <laughs> That's me. Um, the joke. The joke I have with my my friends who aren't in the business is I don't do any more than five lines. That's my <laughs> five lines. Don't. No. Then the line. Well, I I had I had two lines in the in Bros. They cut one, but the other one they added after they shot the first scene. So I didn't even. That was like a bonus, you know. Uh, but I I you know what? It, 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 give you you've done both. You've done live. You've done theater too, but I mean, you've but mm. you've done stand up and you've done, you've acted. Don't you miss the the immediate response in in from live performance? You know, I'll tell you what I miss. Um, what I started doing uh, about I don't know, maybe almost ten years ago, I said to myself, "There's no reason why I need to go into New York." and do theater anymore it just got to be a real hassle yeah. i mean when i first started doing theater and you'll know when we did stand up seven o'clock there were certain blocks you park your car mm -hmm. you go do the play I, with me you'd go i park my car go do the play come back my car would be there i drive home it just got so crazy in new york i just said i'm not i can't go in anymore to do nonsense you know plays you know or, off broadway you just it was just too costly. So what happened was we had a little theater in Hackensack, believe it or uh -huh. not. It was an equity theater. And and we had a nice little company at one time. And we did things like 12 Angry Men. We did, um, we did a number of plays. But here's something that's a connection in a way. And I forget what year it was, maybe 2017, I read uh, uh, the play The Underpants, Steve Martin. I read uh, that this, the interview. The, yeah, yeah. He he adapted it or whatever the word is from a German play, and I went to the theater company and I said, because I was like 
you know, in a way I don't want to put it, but I was the, I was like the face, mm -hmm. you know, of the theater company. And um, I said, let's do this play. This it's funny. And let's, and then, and then I wasn't going to be in it. We were just going to cast it. And then I, I saw there's a role, there was a role for this old guy. And he comes in like at page 22 and then he doesn't come in again until like page 100, you know, and it's a story about, it's set in who knows where it's set, and evidently this woman in the town square, she, ever, somehow everybody saw her underpants, and it's and it's a whole farce where people are trying to rent rooms in this place because, you know, she's whatever. In Let's hopes see of Martin seeing Rose. her underpants. Her, what's that? In hopes of seeing her underpants. Whatever. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> it was sort of a farce, but it was very funny, <clears throat> and. And as we were seeing people to play this role, I said to my friend, I'm going to play this role. I said, because first of all, I, I liked it. He was an old scientist. Mm -hmm. He came in and he had a few a few pages and he was funny. My What I'm getting at is that not knowing two years later, I would get this audition to for this Steve Martin show that he created with John Hoffman. And when, I'm, when I read for the dorm, I first read for the play, for the role that, uh, Nathan Lane did the, the deli. I don't know if you saw it, but he. The, I he saw a couple episodes. Building. I didn't see Nathan though. Nathan no. Lane had this son who was who was deaf, and um, and they, whatever they were very involved in season one. So I read that first, the Nathan Lane role, but I didn't know it was Nathan Lane at that time. But then they they offered me the doorman, and but when I was talking to John Hoffman, I said, you know, John, I said. It's kind of funny, but I, I did Steve Martin's play The Underpants last year. And he said to me, oh, Steve loves to hear that. So, P.S., you know, that little idea that I had to do the play in Hackensack, I think it's, had a big part it, of getting me the TV show. You're in the mat. You're in the zone. I mean, you you know, I believe in the laws of attraction. And when you do things, um, there's a reason. It's not an accident that you chose that play. It's not an accident, uh, you know, that you, you mentioned it. Yeah, it's it's... Uh, you, again, but what I'm you, getting you, at is that's where I got my rush for live theater mm -hmm. well, okay. uh, for the audience. Instead of stand up, I got it. Even if it was doing a little a little play in Hackensack, you know, we had a 224 seat theater. You know, some maybe the most we ever put it was 100 people, but um, it was enough. You know, it was enough. I mean, you yeah. just you did because you, if you do a play, no, I don't care where you do a play. It's the same same. Um, you do the same thing. You start out, you read the play, you get on your feet, you, and, you know, it, it, and every play is exactly run the same. And and I just loved it. I loved being part of a team like that. It, I didn't have to be yeah. up there by myself. I, I'm, it's not even about being by myself up there. I, I just, what I, I don't think I would like about to being in a play is, is that what you just said about it being the same each time you go up and do it. For me, the rush is being up there uh, and it not being the same and being different every time. And, and that well, then, I'll be honest with, well, I'm telling you, when you do, when you're on stage doing a play, if it's, if it's right, it's not exactly the same every night. It's not, if you're in the moment, you and, and, and things happen. Well, yeah. It's things almost like you're things. like a comedy act. I mean, although everything is, is, scripted in a way you're going to deviate based on the audience reaction right i don't yeah. know yeah i mean i can i mean just things happen i can tell you one night i was doing a play in buffalo i went to buffalo i did a play and i was opening a, a can of something and i cut my finger i cut my finger and and he just had i just had it it wasn't that it was bad enough that it was bleeding but i couldn't stop you know we i just had it you know in court, one time I, I, I was doing a play in Vermont and I was playing the butler and the stage was you had to go up three or four steps to get on stage. And as I was going up the steps, I fell. So I walked out on the stage and I said, I fell. <laughs> so, because it, it's in the moment. So it's yeah. really not exactly the same every night. It's that's robot. That's too robotic. Any any time a director says, okay, I want you to put your glass down on this line. That's, you know, yeah. that don't go with me, you know, it's, you know, but it's, it's still, you know, it's still, it's still a rush. There's, there's a real, real rush to people clapping. <laughs> 
I, I I don't no doubt this. I mean, I had a rush, you know, just doing the little stupid movies I've done, and but yeah, and I did enjoy them. Don't get me wrong, but I I just there's something about live performance for me doing stand up live uh, in theaters and, and things like that. I just I have yet to find anything that matches that mm. that rush. You know, it just it thrills me. You um, know, it was great great for me in the early days, very early days. Um, I, I did a lot of um, background work on SNL. Like I did a lot of work on SNL, probably, I don't know, for like five years, I probably did 10 shows a year. You uh -huh. know, where the point was, the, the, the game was that your phone would ring Thursday at about 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock. And, and then, you know, so when you know, knew there was a show, I knew I was on their roster, you know, and I, and right. I got to do... I got to work with everybody. I worked with Steve Martin on the show, you know. I, 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 I uh, and that he, I mean, when I told him, and he said, "Oh, I, I, I thought I recognized your face, but he didn't recognize." Oh, face. Oh. <laughs> but, but that was um, nice of him to do, to say that. No, no, well, he's very, he's very nice. Even when I told him I did the play, and I, and I told him I played the, uh, the professor, he, you know, he had a funny laugh. But he's not, a, he's not a man of a lot of words. You know, what about Martin together, Short? Him and Marty, they're good. I mean, they're good, but, um, you know, they're who they are. And, you know, I, I know the protocol and I, I know, you know, just. I, are they, I'm would you say standoffish little, little no, standoff? No, not no, not standoff. No, we sit there. Sometimes we're all sitting in a room together and, you know, mm -hmm. I just know that. Don't say much. I can tell you the greatest day I ever had in the business was I was working on Curb Your Enthusiasm. And and um, and I didn't I didn't say a word this day. I just sat there. And we were we were gonna shoot a scene and in my my episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm was also uh, Mel Brooks and, and Ann Bancroft. And oh. we it was raining outside and they had no dressing rooms. It was about three of us that were principals Larry, Mel, Mel and, and Ann Tam Bancroft. And I think that was it. Everybody, you know, there were a lot of extras, but there were like three of us who were principals. So we didn't have dressing rooms and there was some rain. They had to wait out rain because it was a line. People were getting in to see, because it was about the producers, the play, the producers. And I, if you know, if you remember Curvy Enthusiasm, that's there was that whole season was Larry David was going to go in and play uh, whatever role in the producers. No, um, I didn't know that. No, I missed that one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The whole season basically was 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 about that, and um, so what I'm getting at was that so it started to rain and they said oh, we don't have dressing rooms for the for the for the people here, uh, everybody into the trailer. So I'm in the back of a camper and it's Mel Brooks, Larry David, uh, Ann Bancroft, Larry Charles. Oh my and, God! And uh, I forget the director's name. I don't know, Rob something or other, and me and two other, and and they were talking, and they were talking about when they did the producers the first time, um, uh, just about what's his name, who who was in the producers, uh, Mel Brooks and what's his name, who was married to Gilda Radner. He was he. Oh, Gene, Gene Wilder. Gene, oh yeah. They okay. were talking Gene about Wilder. Gene Wilder, uh -huh. how Gene Wilder was basically just a paid actor. He wasn't like he didn't have a a piece of of anything. And I was just talking and things. And I said. Listen, what they're talking about. I, I'm and I didn't say a word. I swear to God, I didn't say a word. I just sat there and listened for about two hours. I hope you kept a journal all these years. Have you kept a journal? No, not really. But I come I here. Let me smack back. you in the head. Come here. Just let me smack <laughs> you right have, in the You know what I have downstairs? I have um all, uh, date books from years and years, like calendar me books. Me too. And but you know, I wanted to write a one man show, but I was just so lazy. I never got to it. I never, and I still could. But you know what? My greatest thing was too. I tell you one more thing. Most fun. I played Yogi Berra on stage. I did. Oh, I did cool. this play. Nobody don't like Yogi, and that was it. It was just me on the stage, and that was great. I did that in at the uh, in Vermont. Uh, I forget what the hell it was. Um, Dorset Dorset Theater Festival, and um, that's very cool. It was now. I'm very impressed. Cool. I'm impressed was, now. None of none of the other cool. stuff you've done impresses me. Yeah, that impresses me. It do you have great. a favorite? Do you have a favorite character? Do you have a favorite? Well, that would be it. When I played that Yogi, would, that, yeah, would okay. that would be it. That would be great. All right. Wow. Yeah, I I lucked out too. I, I happened to meet this guy 
who was uh, I was doing a, I forget I was doing a, a pilot that never went anywhere. But my friend Lenny Venito was in it too, and and Lenny says to me, "You see the makeup guy over there?" I go, "Yeah." He goes, "He's an Oscar-winning makeup guy." I said, "Really?" He says, "Yeah, Dick Tracy." And and, and, oh, yeah. and I started I talking to him, and I said, "Listen, you know, I'm going to play Yogi Berry this summer." I said, you "Got any ideas of what I can do?" And he was um. He was what's his name's main makeup guy, the guy who played Jimmy Braddock in in the in the, the fighter, the Australian guy. I, I can't think anybody's name anymore. Oh, I can't remember names either. Yeah, me I, either. I know, anyway, I know he was name. he was a big makeup guy, and I asked him, you know, what can I do? I mean, I'm gonna play Yogi Berra, and and he said, yeah, he said, let me. Uh, he says, why don't you do this? Can you come to my house in Long Island and and, and this and that and whatever? Uh, yeah, all right, I I can. And this was like I was in rehearsal. But I drove to Long Island because I was coming home or something. And he made me things for behind my ears that made my ears stick out. He cut my hair that, like, I, I really looked like Yogi Berra. I mean, it was amazing. Wow. Well, they made you shave stuff. your mustache, though, right? You, you shaved no mustache. mustache. Yeah. yeah. And he, no mustache. And I was born, I was pretty bored. But I wore the Yankee hat a lot in it. Um, I had the Yankee hat on. But still in all, I mean, I'll Do send you a you picture. picture. No I, I think I sent you a picture already of it, but I, I will. I can't. You mean bring it up now? No, I have you, to go. If you sent it to me, I have it on file. Jimmy probably has it too. So I probably. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I sent, I'm pretty sure I sent it to you. But that's you know, it's been great. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. if anything, so I'd like to do. I'd like to do that again. That's what I was about to ask you. We're both in our in our sunset years. And, mm -hmm. I, and I have no desire to ever stop. I mean, my goal is to no. die on stage. You know, you feel the same way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Dick Sean. Yeah. Dick Sean Dick Sean died on stage. Yep. Um yeah. yeah. You didn't know that, Kat? But, you didn't know no, that? No, I didn't. He I was didn't. In, he was doing a bit about death. No. And he collapsed on stage and they thought it was part of his act. Oh my gosh. And by the time they realized it wasn't, he was gone. Yeah. Heart yeah. attack. Yeah. Heart attack. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. So funny. Yeah. So so oh, adventurous. Yeah. So funny. Oh my well, God, I loved him. Uh, wait, when when did that happen? Oh, uh, I don't know. A while ago, like yeah, nineties, yeah. the nineties, nineties. Okay, yeah. and he yeah. was old. Wow. It's a mad, 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 mad world. He's so good in that movie. He he plays uh, Ethel Merman's son, who comes looking. You know, and he says, "I'm coming, Mama. I'm coming. I'm coming." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he was uh, he was Hitler in the producers in the movie, right? Wasn't that was him too? He played um, Hitler. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And yeah, and you're yeah. in the movie. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Wow. I think about it. So that's that's I did the musical. Gone. You know, I did the musical. Which it who were you in the musical? Prisoner, one of the prisoners. Prisoners of love, blue skies above. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. I spent four days with Mel on that. Oh, two how was days. that? What two was that break. like? Two rehearsal days and two shooting days. Mel, Nathan Lane, Matthew Broderick, uh Will Ferrell. Oh, wow. Um that's right. He yeah. played the German. Yeah. Uh -huh. He played the German. Yeah. We had a. Do you great... remember when you when you were still doing stand up? You remember Nathan uh, Stack and Lane when Nathan was doing stand up with his partner? Uh, they were. Comics. I don't. Oh, okay. I didn't know that, that may have been. They would come. Yeah, they used to work the improv a lot, and they work. They work catch too, but and then he, uh, and then when he, then they just broke up, and he he was, used to come into the improv lamenting that he wasn't getting. Work on who? Who was his partner? A guy named Stack. I can't remember his first name. You can find them. They're on um, YouTube. Yeah. Just type in Stack and Lane. Yeah. Okay. She made me. Uh, she made me do it. Yeah. And I did. <laughs> yeah. You know, Silver Friedman died. You knew that? Did you know that? Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. Um, I listened to uh, I listened to Mark a lot. Mark Marin, and um, he had butt on recently but he had oh. bud he had done it a few years ago and when bud died which bud just died didn't he too mm -hmm. like in the right last, yeah about a month yeah. ago yeah. not even i don't think it was yeah. a month ago yeah he, he replayed a bud a bud uh interview that he did that was really good really wow. good my only fact, encounter with bud was uh the day i auditioned for improv he we I sat there all day outside the building he showed up around three o'clock he gave out the numbers he got back in the cab and that was it uh i said i never saw him again <laughs> But at that point, number, Silver had taken over. Lucian, yeah. remember Lucian? Lucian, Lucian, poor Lucian got very, Lucian. very, very ill and passed yeah. away. But he's the one that passed me. He passed me at the comic strip. Oh, wow. 
Well, now, Lou, now uh, the Carolines is closing. Did you see that? I didn't see that, really. Today was just announced. Uh, Caroline Hershey just announced that she's closing the club. New Year's is the last day. Uh, wow. Uh, it's it's all over, Teddy, man. It's a uh, golden age in New York. The, the hot place now is Brooklyn. That's you know, I keep seeing these shows popping up on my phone in Brooklyn. I keep seeing that, really. Yeah, that's that's the new Manhattan, I guess. Is Manhattan's your kids... too expensive. I mean, it is. That's can't... true. But you know, there's nowhere out here to do comedy. It, yeah. It's so sad. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a couple of open mics here and there, but um... they're all over Jersey. But is your son still acting? Is he? Uh... No, no. He's he lives in Syracuse now. He uh, he didn't want to play the game, but he's yeah, better it's... off. He's, he he sells beer. He's a beer salesman. You know, he goes to work nine o'clock, gets home five o'clock, whatever. He's got two little kids and mm. he didn't want to play the game. Even his wife, they they went to um, to school together. They studied at Rutgers in the program. They did a year at the Globe in London. You know, they really studied. His wife came out less than one month being an actress, decided mm. to go back to school and get her master's. And now she's a music teacher, you know, uh. with... And has that theater background now that she's, you know, and she's very talented and she's good with the kids. But they're, they're in Syracuse now. He's not. He did he did The Sopranos. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, well, that's how I, 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 I remember when I was trying to find you, uh, find a contact for you. This was going back a few years. And I, I came across your son's, I, I guess it was his IMDb page or, or mm -hmm. something or a website with him. And, and, and I still was like, is that his kid? Yeah, dumbass Julia. Yeah, of course it's your kid, you know. Um, but what was I going? Where was I going with that? So we're right, talking though. about him getting out of the business, and yeah, the, you got to be born with this desire to be to do this. I mean, it's a it's a fire inside us, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I could really be. Um, I guess depressed if I really wanted to, because, you know, like I said, I'm on two shows, but I haven't worked. I did an episode of the blacklist, but that's what I've done on the, since murders. Uh, I did one episode of the blacklist. Now murders comes back beginning of the year, hopefully because they re I don't know if you know, but last season, they really wrote me some good stuff at the end uh -huh. of the season. They wrote me really a couple of good episodes. So I'm hoping, you know, that comes, I know it's coming back, but you know, you don't hear anything until, you know, I'll get a call maybe next week and say, you know, all right, you might be in episode one. Oh, you're in episode one. But, you, you know, it's just I, I thought there'd be more. I really thought there'd be more. I, I and, thought that after I did America's Got Talent, I thought that, OK, I finally broke through and, and it'll be smooth sailing for them. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I work and my money's gone up a lot, but it, it's yeah, not. Yeah, you know, it's. It's it's show business. <laughs> it's show business, and thank God, thank God, I have eight grandkids and my wife here, and um, four kids we have, yeah. and and that's my life. I mean, that's even today. I was really mad because my grandson was playing hockey at four thirty, and I said because I go to all his games mostly, and he's a sophomore, and he's really playing varsity. He's really playing good. And I said, shit, I can't go to the game. You know, I got to. And then oh, somehow. I'm sorry. No, that's oh, all right. We, we no, did that no, to here's you. what happened. If the technology is so amazing today, somehow I went on YouTube and I found the rink and I watched it on my television. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's very cool. Oh, my God. Tech, and yet tech. you couldn't hook up with our little podcast. How what about the hell that, is yeah? wrong? Well, I think we did okay on the phone. We did, did good. We did I'm not good. good. Even there... with the self tape, you know, we self tape I... now. I don't know if it, what time you get to get off here, but I don't know how long. I don't know. Got. I could be here all night. I, I don't want to keep you if you got. No, things. I'm just yeah. saying. I don't. My wife. We're, we're going to eat like when I'm done here. But uh, yeah, this, even the self taping thing. Now we do self taping. You know, and it's I I hate it. I like it because I don't have to go to the city, but I feel I'm not. I got to be in the room. You yeah. got it. I, I understand to what you're saying. Yes. The I, connection, I the energy, the, the back and mm. forth, all yeah. of it. Yeah. Me I have a neighbor. My dining room doesn't work. Yeah. I have a neighbor that does it with me and she, she's my go-to person. She'll run to the camera and everything. And 
uh, but you're right. I'm standing in front of a wall in my kitchen, and it's like, you know, I'm supposed to be a drunken old lady. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. by the way, that's everything I get called up for. I'm old lady, sick old lady, old lady in the nursing home, old lady, dead old lady, drunk I, old you know, lady. I'm just drunk old lady. <laughs> you're like me. I, I and I, I'll, I'll claim, I'll, I will uh, tell anybody and who says that they've played more cabbies than me in New York. I'll tell them no, they haven't, because nobody played more cabbies than me in New no, York. No, I know. I, played, I've said... <laughs> I can't tell you how many I've played. But you got the perfect and... cabbie face. That's the thing. You know, you my, were made for that. My kid. When he was at Rutgers, every uh, Friday, they used to bring an industry person in uh -huh. to, uh, you know, when he was a senior, they would bring in an industry mm -hmm. person and they would talk to him. And one day this, I forget his name right now, but he was a, he was a voiceover mm -hmm. casting director, this guy and this and that. And they go around the room, everybody tells him their name. And about five minutes later, he goes back to my son and he says, what's your name again? And he says, uh, Ted, Ted Kaluka. He says, Teddy Kaluka? He says, yeah, that's my father. He says, Teddy Kaluka's your father? I said, yeah. He says, this guy, this kid's father has played more cabbies and hot dog men than anybody in the <laughs> Well, let me ask you a question. Uh, did it ever, have you ever? I don't want, to, I don't want this to sound like an insult because it's not meant no, to you be. Don't but... know it. Say whatever you want to say. I was saying. Uh, your as friends far are your as friends as, forever. I know, but a serious lead, uh, or 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 series of because you got a you know you got great comic chops too. Have on ever... telev on television, yeah. yeah, I've done a couple. I did one last year. I did a um an episode of Bull, where I played this um this guy who they were trying to take away his restaurant. I chained myself to the building, and and you know, and uh, that was a serious role. Um, I've done a few. I, I but I meant a recurring, a, like on a sitcom kind of thing, uh, like a recurring, a lead in a sitcom. Has that I, ever I, been offered? No, 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 no. Why do you say it like that, though? I mean, you've got a career that people would die for. That's absolutely right. You're right. But what can I tell you? You know, I and maybe now something like that'll come from murders or so. But again, I, I my biggest problem is that I'm not fifty. I think if I was fifty, you know, things would be a little different. But I'm not. I'm not better. I promise you. I never. If you never. No, care. no. I. I wasn't I, even implying that I'm bitter. I'm. I'm no, terrible. Oh, she's I'm really bitter. bitter. She. Of course. Of course. You know. Angry. But let me tell you something. There's a lot of a lot of work that comes with you know a lead yes. on on something and. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, again, if he was a seventy year old character like. Uh, they're not going to give them that much anyway. You know what I mean? You could do it like it has in their kind of parts, you know? Sure, you could... sure. I mean, we had, what's his name on the show? And he was like, he was dying. I hate to put it that way. Um, Literally? The big guy was a big heavy drinker from Long Island. Uh, I can't think of anybody's name. I'm afraid to say. He was on Broadway. Huh? He won. He he won. He won uh, Tony Awards for Death of a Salesman. Big guy. Uh, big big guy. White hair. Oh, Brian Dennehy. Dennehy. We yeah. we had Dennehy on the blacklist. I I think he died on the set. I hate to put it that way, but wow. he was working, and I think with the, but, you know, he worked Friday, Wednesday, and Thursday. He died or something like that. You know, like yeah. Man. So yeah, he worked. Was it the torture? End. Did you torture him to death? <laughs> no, 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 I never. I never had a scene with him, but um, but he was great. And even when he got older, they put the earpiece in his ear to help him with the lines. I mean, wow. Um, yeah, I wow. Know. You know, it sucks getting old. It, it it does it does and and you know like I was saying before you know things don't come as easy now I don't I I I need more than one rehearsal if I'm come the last blacklist I did I'm coming in. I got the, 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 the oxygen caught in, in my pushing with my left hand. With my right hand, I'm pulling behind me a surgical tray on wheels that has all these I'm gonna cut this guy's hand off. That's the bit if he doesn't yeah. talk. And I have this old saw, a geese saw that's like a, a like a wire, you know, it's that kind of saw, you know. But but just the whole and you gotta and and and, and when you come in, you gotta hit this mark and the leaves mm -hmm. the table has to stop here. And you stop, and you get one rehearsal. 
you know, so that's my only gripe with television is that I wish we got more rehearsal well, because it's a, you can know the lines, you can know the lines, know the lines. Once you get out there on your feet, everything changes. So how everything. is this? All right. So let's say you get uh, you get the one man show up, which I think you should be working on. How does it end? What's the close final scene? I don't know. I, I don't have an answer. <laughs> I don't have an answer. You stumped him, Julia. It's got to be. And I think the whole the whole show is different stories, different stories of of of. I'll I'll tell you a story. I got to work with Robert De Niro in the movie The Comedian. I don't know if uh -huh. you've ever seen it. Have yeah, seen I it? love that movie. You should see it. Okay, have it's a great movie. Yeah. De Niro. I play um, a fan. He had a sitcom thirty years ago. He's right. at the point now. We we well, we lost Kathy. Oh, He's at did. the point. I don't see you. But anyway, you, you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Should I go on? Yeah. Okay. So, so, um, so I get an audition to go do this movie with De Niro. So what happens then, I said, oh, I'm going to look up who this director is. And I look up the director and his name is Taylor Hackford. And I said, what did Taylor Hackford do? And I look and look, I said, holy shit, Taylor Hackford did this movie, Mortal Thoughts, that I was an extra on, like, 20 years ago. And it's funny, the night I was there, Bruce Willis had a scene where he had to get in the casket and he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. He didn't want to get in. I'm down to 10% on my phone, so we be I better talk fast. Okay, so, we'll wrap up. No, I can plug it in. So so um, he wouldn't get in the casket. He wouldn't get in the casket. So P.S. now, 20 years later, I go into this audition with Taylor Hackford. Now, I was an extra. So I said to him, I worked with you before. He says, oh, yeah? Where? He said, I did. I was on Mortal Thoughts. Not saying I was an extra. I was on Mortal Thoughts. He goes, really? I said, yeah. And I was there the night that Bruce Willis wouldn't get into the casket. And he looks at me. He says, but he did. And <laughs> he did. And right there, I got the part to do this scene with De Niro just by telling that story from 20 years ago or whatever wow. and i don't know the that's what makes you uh, you that, that's that your story, schmoozing but... talent yeah you should yes. be a great schmoozer so all right so here's the closing here's how the, here's how the play goes you come out you're on you're on the set you're on a set for some movie whatever you're you're in between scenes and you tell it that's where the show takes place and you talk about your life you just you're just sitting on a chair waiting for your call and uh and, and you tell these stories and then periodically throughout the place, she's gone again. Uh, periodically you get up and do a scene and then you, you know, you, you do a scene from something you did. Uh, that's the play. Yeah. 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 That's all what right. the Yogi play was. The Yogi play was where, all right, then he's sitting dinner with, he's having dinner with the family and they're not there, but they are there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's what you, you're right. It's gotta be something to that effect. And I like the idea of sitting in, like you're sitting in the casting room. Yeah, you know, waiting. Or you're for on them. the set, one of them for something. Yeah, yeah. I'll help you. Call me. I'll I mean, I can. I'll never forget. I was auditioning for a commercial years ago, and and somebody said, uh, I heard them. They said, "How how tall are you?" I, I said, "I'm five foot six. They, and I heard one guy say, "The other guy, the rabbit suit is five foot nine. The guy in the rabbit suit yeah. has to be five <laughs> I mean, just d different stories, you know. Well, I had a guinea tea on one time in, in an audition, and I heard the director say, make sure our guy has a shirt like that. You know what I mean? Like, so, <laughs> so it's, it's you know, it's been fun. It's been a, it is a fun situation. It really is. And I don't lose any and, sleep of anything. No. I, I, boy, I'm so glad. I, I feel so glad that we, we, we're together again after all these years. I really, I miss no, you. Me too. Me too. I mean, and, and I hope this is useful this tonight, what we've talked about. But, you know, going back, you know, we, we did start out and and we can show, you know, we, we, we started out with the best. I mean, and, yeah. and, you know, we're in that puzzle. You want to make, you put that puzzle together. We're a piece in that puzzle. And that's how I look at the whole business. I just want to be a piece in the puzzle. That's the way I feel. I mean, I, I'm proud of the fact that both you and I survived. We we managed to somehow claw our way through all the shit and made it to made a living doing what we love. 
I mean, I get it every once in a while. I mean, not too much now, but and like I said, I'm going to be 70 this week, you know. But I'll still get the occasional person who, who I probably worked with at the record, maybe because I left the record in like '88, you know. So I'll run into some supermarket and they'll say, "You still doing the acting thing?" You know what I mean? Like, like you know, with all the stuff you do, you've done. They still got you're still doing the acting thing. It's like. And I, and I always say there was a guy who worked with named Bert Kip who said to me when I left the record to be an actor, you'll be back in six months. Yeah. And I thank him. If he listens to this ever, I don't know, but I, I thank him because I never forgot that he said that. Yeah. And, well, uh, I thank you, uh, my friend. And uh, No, really, this is great. How, how well, can, I I, we... can I see this? I hate to put it that way. Can I hear yeah. this? Oh, yeah. I want to my be kids up, hear uh... It'll be up on YouTube. Well, it'll be up on yeah. It'll be up on YouTube. Let's see. We've got we we're about two weeks behind. We have right, two ahead just, of you. So just tell uh, me when. Yeah, Jimmy will. Jimmy, if you can, if you can hear me, send it. We'll send you out a little uh, a little note. I put it up on my Facebook page. You know when when it's going up. So okay, um, I put up on my Facebook page that we were doing it today. Oh, oh cool. good. Okay, great. Yeah, it'll. Uh, we have. I forget who else is who's coming up next week. We've already taped them, but yeah. Uh, and when you come down, well, when you're down here again, you still where come down here? to shore or something? I'm near Tom. Yeah, we, yeah, we come down. Yeah, we go down to LBI. You know, where are you? Right. I don't want to say because we're taping the show here. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. um, all right, all right. Yeah, I'm in Idaho. I know Tom's River. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But listen, um, I'm well, so happy know, to see you. Let me know. Let me know where you are. Okay, you know, I will. And uh, give, give, is Angela there? Yeah, yeah. You want to say hello? Yeah, say put her over. Let hey, Ann. Come here. Tell her I look a little hello. different. <laughs> oh, come on. She's saying, "Oh, don't." Let me, I'll go find her. Hold on. Okay. It's so Good. Italian. Hey, Ange, come here. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Say oh, well, that, that lighting is good. Hi, Ange. Hi, How you doing? You? Good. I haven't seen you in forever. It's, okay, it's no, so it's nice to see time. you both. You both look great. You both look great. Oh, though. really? Oh. She's the best. <laughs> I promise you. She's the, no, come here, come here. I know we're crazy here. Look, at she's putting up the Christmas tree. Oh, <laughs> Buon Natale. Buon Natale. You can see all the stuff. And, look at and that. she's getting ready. We're gonna eat soon. Oh, right. we gotta let them go eat, Julia. No, All right, buddy. Take All right. I love you, love you, love you. you thank I love you. Too. Thank you. And thank uh, happy holidays, you, Kathy. You too, and, honey. Right. Thank I'll, you. I'll, uh, I'll call you. We'll, uh, we'll yes, talk. please. All right. Okay. All right. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Teddy. Thank Be you. well. Bye. -bye. All right. <laughs> well, it's been a great show, Kath. It was fun. What a the, nice man. It was a fun, I can't believe nice you know man. someone so nice. I know. It's hard to believe. Huh? We were very close friends back in the day when we first we started. Because we were all alone. You know, we were we, we were newbies. We didn't know anybody. Sure. So we kind of hung on to each other for support, you know. And, uh, yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. Good, good, good time. It was a good time. Thank you. Thank you for uh, everything. And... Uh, Eventually, he's going to get that music queued up. Well, we can't go anywhere till we hear the, the, the music's by... playing. No, I don't hear it by Paul it's Marzano. It's playing. No, it's not. It it's is not playing. playing. I don't hear it. It doesn't hear it. It Bye. is playing. Say goodbye, Julia. Okay, goodbye, Julia. 